Hello and welcome to this very short summary of Hurricane Carol of 1953. A very short summary compared to a regular short summary because I was not able to find as much information on Carol as some other hurricanes. Granted, she happened in 1953. Until becoming a until this point, a tropical wave on August 28th, what would become Hurricane Carol became a depression on August 28th. She would then become a tropical storm around August 31st. Those are these light blue dots here. All of these points are, are, what, are what is to be Carol becoming a depression. On September 3rd, a Hurricane Hunter mission would report winds of 160 miles per hour, that is 260 kilometers per hour, and a gnarly minimum pressure of 929 millibars. Definitely not the lowest that has ever happened, but still very low nonetheless. These maximum winds of, again, 160, were up to 3 miles in diameter, that is very wide. Usually... These strong hurricane force winds, these Cat 5 winds, are not that wide. Uh, obviously, your regular hurricane force winds down all the way down to 75 will be a relatively wide area for a hurricane. Hurricanes are big, but not, not 160 mile per hour winds, 3 miles in diameter. As you can see here, she would also keep up this 3 mile diameter. Uh, wind field of 160 for up to a full day that is these two red points along her track right here indicating cat 5. By September 6th she would pass this little speck here on the map that is Bermuda. She would specifically pass within 225 miles or 362 kilometers of Bermuda. As you can tell from the track here she would not really impact any land along her way, except for Nova Scotia. In fact, she would be classified as an extratropical cyclone by the time she would landfall, specifically near St. John, Nova Scotia. Those, she would have winds of 75 miles per hour, or 121 kilometers per hour. While this is indeed hurricane strength, again, being classified as extratropical does not officially make her a hurricane upon landfall. Winds in Bermuda, despite being 225 miles away, still were at around cat 2 strength, 110 miles per hour, or 180 kilometers per hour. She would drop 4.33 inches of rain in the Cote Nord region of eastern Quebec, and as is seen here on this uh, upper right hand picture, 3.7 inches of rain, and I believe Emmy is Maine. I'm an American, but I do not care about Maine, so I do not know its abbreviation off the top of my head. We also know that extra tropical storm Carol would down 500,000 square feet of trees. That's a fair bit. In all, both Hurricane and extra tropical storm Carol, them being the same thing, of course would cause a total of 2 million US dollars in damage and tragically kill 5. Although I only have 3 points of, of significance for you, they're actually pretty major. Number 1, she is only one of 5 Category 5s to ever not have their name retired up until the time that I'm recording this. This can absolutely change, but as of me recording, it is not. She was also the very first Category 5 in the Atlantic Basin since 1944, and because of this, she was also the very first named Category 5. Like, category, or just hurricanes in general, were not named in 1944. They were only starting to get named around, I believe it was 1948, but that was only within the National Hurricane Center, so official names would not happen until 1950. And this is only three years after that, so the very first named Category 5 has the distinction of, ha of its name not even being retired. Quite surprising. And that is all that I have for Hurricane Carol. Again, a short one because I did not have a lot of information on her, unfortunately. But until then, 
until I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.